to pass. We What you've done for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Taka pi wo makomborero na yo baba paniso za taise makomborero. Taka pi wo makomborero na yo baba paniso za taise makomborero. Yeah. <laughs> 
Jehovah God, we give you praise, honor, and glory, Almighty God, for you alone are worthy. You alone, Jehovah God, are worthy of all honor and glory, Almighty God. We exalt you, Father God.
seven. One. Should I switch off this one? Imagine you move them up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, this one is fine. Maybe you have to switch off that one then. Is, is that fine? Okay, it's fine now. Good. Ezekiel 47, verses 1 to 10. Let's pick it up and. And oh, you are moving it. No, you don't just leave it there. Ezekiel 47, verses 1 to 10. I want to. This one is switched off, right? I want us to read Ezekiel 47. Let's pick it up verse 1. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. This is a prophetic message from Ezekiel dating back many centuries. But he's seeing in time and he's seeing this, this dispensation that we are living in and beyond this very dispensation. So he's prophesying or he's seeing a vision, prophecy, flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the front of the temple faced east and the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple south of the altar i want us to pick it up now verse 3. verse 3 would read and when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand he measured 1000 cubits and he brought me or he brought me through is that through the waters, the water came up to my ankle deep. He's seeing the, the Spirit of God and the outpouring of the Spirit of God as in these stages here. And verse 3 says, verse 4 says, and again he measured. So it's first time he sees the waters are ankle deep. In verse 3, he sees two more stages in addition to stage 1. Let's find those stages. Verse, uh, verse 4. And again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. So the water now to his knees. And the water came up to my knees. And again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The water came to my loins, to my waist. He's talking of that. Verse uh, 5. And again, he measured 1,000. It was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep water in which one must swim a river that could not be crossed you'll find that right through history when god pours out his spirit it comes or he comes in different levels level one level two level three level four and level five are deep things of the spirit only those that are experienced in the deep things of the spirit can then navigate and let's pick it up verse eight verse 8 says then he said to me this water flows toward the eastern region it flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the valley and enters the sea when it reaches the sea its waters are healed so the signs and wonders there beginning to take place because the river now has reached a stage where only those can, that can navigate in deep waters can survive verse 9 and it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river goes will live say we live 
and there will be a very great multitude of fish fish in the bible speaks of multitude speaks of the harvest of souls of men and women men turning to god so it's a powerful prophetic word a simple says as god increases his levels of his grace over time you will see signs and wonders having seen signs and wonders you will see men and women even those that are atheists not believing in god beginning to tend to god and these are very many fish and he says fish of different kinds and for they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes say amen father anoint your word as we share it today in jesus mighty name amen there are four stages there that are given stage number one ankle deep stage number two knee deep stage number three loin deep stage number four a river that only swimmers can survive i believe we are not yet passed through stage one which is ankle deep presence of god but very soon worldwide you will see the waters moving to our knees and very quickly to our waist and very quickly to a river that's totally flooded that needs you and i to be able to navigate that way god would have pre prepared us and that's why he is the fivefold say fivefold the work of the fivefold according to ephesians 4 verse 11 and particular verse 12 is to mature the church say the mature the church say it one more time to mature the church that's why you must be matured when you're in a church you can't be regressing sitting in a church you must grow yeah and that's why wise men and women of god when they are with the people of god and the children of god they spend time teaching them okay i can prophesy but prophecy does not grow you it will encourage you but what grows you is dissecting the word breaking it down line upon line precept upon precept say amen so that you be mature the work of the fivefold being apostles being your prophets your evangelists your pastors your teachers are there to mature the church mature the church and as you can see even though you are teaching it's very hard to mature certain people i want you to look at your neighbor and say you are very hard to mature you take time <laughs> it's your neighbor right now look at them and say <laughs> there are people that have been in church for a long time long time but they never grow i never want to be in church for a long time and never grow because then you begin to hinder the others that are coming maybe can you visit veteran diana a athlete church with ala can you you sub a i will let you say you know what i a for 20 years and therefore there are people that stand by the door when i say by the door i'm not talking of that door i'm talking of a door door to someone's pathway to growth but they never grow themselves and they hinder many people from growing again like your neighbor look at your neighbor and say when i would tell us how to fetch it up how cool you were now how cool we fully go cooler cooler man cool about it this is about telling oily can job i said i know it is about big is and the power of fancy but focus of a prophet teacher service of mom with baba baby sisu who would you want to move up but look me who's up a good hey cooler man cooler when I'm a charismatic. He lives here with your lay pants because they don't want to grow. When a word is taught, please practice it. Amen. Practice the word. Amen. Write the word down in a notebook or in a pen or in a diary. I hope the diary is not old like this one. Uh, Nyasa and Rhodesia. Mm. Okay. Make sure you write somewhere where you can because these messages you will preach somewhere. Ah, you will stand up somewhere and you are asked to pray. Hey, we have many churches at Harvest House. You will visit Kokwe. They will say, Oh, this one is from uh, Bishop Nat. Can we allow you to preach? They don't know that you don't know the word. <laughs> I don't know whether Jonah solo the fish or the fish solo Jonah, but my Bible. 
please, 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 write the messages down. I am surprised that wherever I go and I sit down, people expect me to preach. Even in funerals, they expect me to. So I go ready with a message. Even though I'm not the one conducting, just in case one of my sons is up there, ah, oh, Bishop, can you come and say a few words? A few words. And you want to a Bishop, so we will be in a structure now. I'll start with, ah, Dinjan. <laughs> so we encourage about So you must teach yourself to carry a word all the time. Even on birthday parties, even even when we celebrate our pregnant. <laughs> we have used when a pair of shoes to come and say, What do I say? Ganging echo lava, what do I say now? Why am I being called to say they expect you to encourage them? And Apostle Paul says, Be in season yeah, all the time, be ready because you never know. In season, in season, all the time, say amen. So, there is the levels of the waters, and Ezekiel is prophesying in time, saying, Prophesying in time. We are teaching about the apostolic, the prophetic. We have decided to take one month, which is not enough, to teach on the prophetic, so that you will understand the genuine prophetic. On Sunday, I will be teaching on stages towards the manifestation of the word of God. What happens when a prophetic word is given to you? If you are not schooled in the prophetic, when you are given a word, that said the Lord, you think, my God, tomorrow it will happen. It won't happen tomorrow. <laughs> There are several stages that are contrary to that word given to you. In fact, it will seem like this, that word is given to you and it says you are going up. First of all, you go down. And many steps down before you pick up. But when you pick up, your enemies must watch out. Because you come in acceleration mode to overtake. Say amen. Rarely does God give you a word and suddenly everything. I will show you the scriptures and then you will see why you must stay put. I've been given many prophetic words by small people and very big people. And all of them follow the same pattern. All of them. When they're given to you, the vibrancy is amazing. You will think it will happen tomorrow. Ah! And when you're a woman and you're barren and someone says, you will have a child, you think, uh, tomorrow. Yeah, you do whatever you do with your husband. I say husband. With your husband and nothing happens. Yeah, when you are really giving up, suddenly... Suddenly, <laughs> and you are going into an unawares, you think it's a checkup, and maybe you have a running tummy, and the doctor tells you, Ah, there is something right there. Mm. There's a lady who carried for seven months, she didn't know she was pregnant. Seven months, mm. seven months. Katlan <laughs> Kangela, I just said seven months. She discovered seven months that she was pregnant hmm. so we end the galog say we end the galog okay let's go back to our topic so that we learn this thing quickly here so these waters as you can see when they reach a certain stage they bring fish or they bring healing first to fall signs and wonders like i said to you and i always say to you here are the things that we await before jesus christ appears in the clouds very simple things don't be deceived by anybody here's the first thing the greater outpouring of the holy spirit okay you say but the holy spirit is he not greatly outpoured no not as yet okay if you've lived in revivals you will understand great outpouring of the holy spirit followed by signs and wonders followed by followed by many people saved even nations tending to christ regions tending to christ and then shall the son of man appear I can't tell you which day no one knows if somebody tells you a day they're a false prophet but we can tell by the signs they say the signs yeah the signs i was reading somebody in california today married a dog mm, married a dog this person married a dog yeah he says how come men and men are allowed to marry women and women are allowed to marry now i'm marrying a dog they found it in the law of the state of california some way that you are allowed to do that so he married a dog but he says to consummate his marriage he has to go to another state because in california he is not allowed to sleep with his dog but there is another state he calls it nebraska or i think it so that he can then 
sleep with this dog. He says, I can't wait to sleep with the dog. <laughs> we are cool and over, but, but the whole world is like that. Hey, maybe I'm sitting and the person sitting next to me is saying, Lami Please. <laughs> you will never know. Never know how I said this. How I said I never Let's come now straight. We said, what did we say on Sunday? We said on Sunday, God is a progressive God. Say it with me. God is a what? Progressive God. God is always dynamic. There are two things or several things that God does. The two I want to share with you is number one, God is progressive. But number two, God is always speaking. It's just that your area, your antenna is switched off. It's not positioned in the right position to receive the voice of God. But he is always speaking. Tell you number God is always speaking. If you listen carefully, you will hear him talking to you. The problem is at times you're too busy, at times you don't know the voice of God, at times you're too stubborn even to hear the voice of God. But God is speaking and speaking to you. Say Amen. So God is a progressive God. As evidenced by Ezekiel's river, ankle, knee, loin, a river. A river that reaches men and that produces healing and that produces signs and wonders and great many fish. So right through nature, therefore we say, we see this analogy uh, is that of progression. God is a progressive God. Human beings progress and they progress this way. From infants to children, young adults to adults and to old age. I've never seen someone coming as an infant and suddenly after three years you are reaching old age. It's always a progression. Say Amen. Always a progression. That's why even the prophets cannot violate this process. You can't just instantly fall pregnant and in a month's time give a baby that's fully formed. It cannot because God has put certain stages that must be followed. Say Amen. The sun, ladies, the sun rises. That's a gradual process. The sun does what? It is a gradual process. You don't wake up at 6 a.m. You find that after one hour, it's night now. So many will have to go to work. See, the tide does not come in full all of a sudden. Full tide comes out gradually. Say it with me. Comes out. Even the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Look at Haggai 2, verse 9. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It started with the early temple but he says the glory of this later temple shall be greater than the former so it's a process gradually that means there was a former glory and it was it was it was not impactful in its nature than that which is coming which is the later glory that will be so powerful and that we all await in the name of jesus say amen where did it all begin? This is what we said on Sunday. It began somewhere in the book of Acts. It started with wine. Say wine. Say it again. Say wine. Right there in the book of Acts in the New Testament, the moves of God. There had been moves of God earlier on in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, it started with the book of Acts. There were 120 people waiting in the upper room. These people were hundred, despondent. They included the disciples of Christ. They were despondent. Jesus had gone. They didn't know what it meant, him going and leaving them alone. But he had given them an instruction. Tarry ye in Jerusalem. Tell you never tarry ye in Jerusalem. Wait in Jerusalem. They had been waiting there for 10 days, but 40 days had Jesus resurrected to so make it 50, the number of Pentecost, and then the Holy Spirit was poured forth. Say Amen. So it started there, and Peter says something, and this is what Peter said. They said, he said, these are not drunk as you suppose. He's saying, yes, they're drunk. But not as you suppose. They're not drunk with Castle Lager or Chibuku Chibuku or Castle Light or Sminov or Black Label. But these are drunk. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That in the end times I'll pour out my spirit upon some flesh, upon all flesh. 
They were sin drunk. They were full of new wine. Say amen. We said wine does three things. That's the first stage. Wine does these three things. Wine of the spirit refreshes. Don't drink wine outside there. I'm talking of the spirit. Wine of the spirit will refresh you. Times of refreshing must come to the body of Christ. Many are weary, many are tired, many are fatigued. But times of refreshing must come. It brings joy, the joy of the Lord. Say amen. And it brings vibrancy. Say amen. So wine, after wine comes fire. Not that it does away with wine, but in addition to wine, there is fire. Say fire. So fire is the second level. First level, wine. Second level, fire. Fire speaks of the following properties or characteristics. There they are. It speaks of cleansing, purging, repentance, holiness, refining. You will find that as we move closer and closer, God will begin to convict us of even smaller sins. Smaller sins. You will start with the big. But eventually you and I will not get away with smaller sins in our hearts. Sins of strife, jealousy, envy, and so forth. He will begin to convict you. Change that. Change that. Change that. Let go of that. Let go of that. You know we are in second stage that is refining. Whenever you see God convicting me and convicting you of our sins, it means he wants us to progress. Say amen. When God's Spirit is pointing issues in your life, don't get angry with God. God is trying to help you. He is trying to help you so that you clean up, so that I clean up. We are full of nonsense on the inside. Say Amen. Both bishops, pastors, and everybody else. We are full of nonsense and God must deal with us. We have issues. Issues issues people are very strange you can be sitting next to somebody and you don't know them and you look at their shoes and you think your shoes are better their shoes are better than yours strife hits you it's tatulog it's kumba kumba is kumba zen kuku kumba yusen jakumba just then you begin to hate that person or you look at them and you think their hair too is better than you or the wig that they put is better than yours or whatever then strife and that person has never said anything to you so the holy spirit is bound to convict you say amen lift up your hands and say holy spirit convict me of every nonsense in my life i need to change and to be more like you in jesus name one of the sins that we said all of us is the sins of the flesh say the flesh mm, the flesh is difficult to please flesh demands and yet the Holy Spirit resides in the body, inside ourselves, because we are the temples. But inyam, inyam yasupa. Ongas wone ngba ne buku gisu tu buku kamalem. Inyam ayaki yasupa. Look at your neighbor and say, Inyam ayaki yasupa le. Especially a certain aspect of the meat for a man is the meat that hangs forward. That meat is a problem. In Chompisa, he has super. <laughs> Say in Chompisa. <laughs> that is Inyam Agukali Nahwe. Roman Empire fell because of Inyam. The Greek civilization collapsed because of Inyam. And we are, America is collapsing because of Inyam. Europe is collapsing because of Inyam. Africa is collapsing because of Inyam. And therefore, we need to subdue the flesh. Is it easy? easier said than done? Paul says, I, the spirit man, I buffet my flesh. That means daily you have to buffet. You can't say I buffeted two months ago, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Even if you don't have to buffet, you have to buffet. Even if you don't have to buffet, you <laughs> so therefore listen to what Malachi says the closing prophet of the Old Testament he says behold I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me can you see he will prepare the way before me in other words before I come I'll send the message and you better listen to what the messenger is saying first of all but who can endure the day of his coming 
and who can stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire when you begin to feel uncomfortable in church see what will bishop say today who's a good team who's a born into new zealand's lay him who's a born into new ukulumelo manu bishop katinto nezu kanyangani zivela maate ukulum indaba when you are uncomfortable in church you are in the right position because you are ready to receive from god the bible says woe to those that are at ease in zion love what is the big you are not on your on your on your well i nearly said on your toes but on your on your uncomfortable i then so tina lape is a pre microphone over in the privilege over who made a screen a little bit uncomfortable hey now she is always within that chigil and bubble work so sale gonke nje ku red mo pile nje awu kwazi ukuthi sebone yami ngatshintsha ngihamba ngale isebone ngicine sengihamba ngenye isebone eh mele hlale kwekwazi baba ja kwekwazi so in these days of the prophetic where god is unveiling things you will never know as you come to church we have one again eh kumele sale siqolele look at your neighbor and say i forgive you i know you're going to mess up i forgive you in advance i know your ways you are so terrible so i forgive you in advance but he says for he is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap we are cases mm. we used to sing long back a song which is we are corrupt and how many know that song <laughs> yeah. The Holy Spirit will come and cleanse you. But watch verse 3. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. If you have know anything about mining and how silver is purified, when silver is purified, it is dross that comes to the fore. Because we are not going to be so that's what God will begin to do in his body. Begin to intensify the fire so that it may get boom. So you will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. After fire now comes the third stage, say the wind. The wind, not that it does away with wine and fire, no, in addition to wine and fire, the wind comes. Okay, wind, say the wind. Say it again, say the wind. Now the wind is the supernatural move of God. The time for signs and wonders is coming. So we are in the stage of the wine, and the fire but this stage of the wind is very very crucial and you and i must, must participate in it the signs and wonders are not going only to be performed by bishops and prophets and, and pastors and so no this next move that is coming is no superstars it means you and you and you and you as long as you are anointed and full of the holy spirit you will perform signs and wonders you are anointed. In fact, the New Testament, the New Testament, ladies and gentlemen, takes away the power centered around the prophet. Ours is to equip you so that you do the works outside. Uh -huh. You are a believer. And these signs, the book of Luke says, Big Matthew says, shall follow them that believe. In my name. Say, in my name. In my name. So lay your hand upon your neighbor's shoulder and say, Man again, Zamu Tandaze Lawena. Please practice that. Lay your head. 
Say these words in Debele. Maybe in Debele is much power. Say him kusa ne pu mangi kamaliga ches. Go for the insane things you will fear, but pu mangi kamaliga ches. You didn't know I was saying that, did you? Yeah. Because in every man, there is enthusiasm favor. In every man, women are right, but in every man, there is enthusiasm favor. So when I put a castle in the moon, pin the foot. Now that person next to you, when you pin the foot, mba bi mba bi tumbelak, mba bi mba. Hey, chef, mba bi mba bi tumbelak, mba bi to. Open the foot. Can't man it, can't man. What is this? You move forever, puma. You are my Timona Supi Change. You move forever. Abanye si forever na parat. We won't do it outside, but in a parat there is forever. Hey, you move forever. Abanye ba forever na meso, ba kangeli walala. Ikas gutala la kini kumuva na sebu ya church se kanya la yiko ni kichima kona. Hey, la pa yiko kulenda ba kona. Hi, manasi Jesus, please say ba. I see. We talk of the wind. The sovereign move of God will have miracles that will not be attributed to a certain man of God. But it will be the breath of God across the church, across the city, across the nations. Every believer, say every believer, lift up your palms before God and say, these hands of mine are highly anointed. When I lay them upon the demonized, upon the sick, they will be delivered in the name of Jesus. Now that you have prayed for your hands, now lay your hand upon your neighbor's shoulder gently and say these words. Wufebe puma. Ama yeye zuri, yuo zuri man timone puma pe. Umgano angu ni rote spanzo wa kutwele. So wa kipi ni kuna pal? Uya hamba sengo. If you are sticking in, if, if you make that prayer to a man in Chombitia, the papas, no more problems <laughs> for a while. For a season. For a season. <laughs> because it's a stubborn thing. For a season. So you have to deal with it continuously. Hey, you can't celebrate today's battle tomorrow, today's victory tomorrow. Tomorrow you will encounter some, something else different. So it's a fight. Say amen. Mm. Men identify with what I'm talking about. That's why they are quiet. You ladies, you may not understand. Men, mm -mm. listen to First Corinthians two, verse nine. It reads, "But as it is written, say it with me, as it is written, I has not seen, huh? and then no ear heard, no have entered." into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. How many love God here? That's what that scripture says. So in other words, don't die before you see what you are about to see. Please don't have Stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. Isaiah 8 verse 18, talking of the families, he says, here I am and the children whom the Lord has given me. What are we for? We are for signs and wonders in Israel. Israel is not the nation only, but Israel is you and I. We are the Israel of God. Say it with me. Say, I'm the Israel of God. Say it one more time. I'm in the Israel of God. So we haven't seen anything as yet. These are the, some of the things that we are likely to see. What we call creative miracles. Yeah, creative miracles. Healings. Blind eyes here. Deaf ears unstopped. Dead raised and limbs growing and the dead being raised. We na la un humble unkulun kuru uzaba vusaba ne maba fileyo. Say amen. Basabe tembe we na gulaini akula potala kun. 
kungafuru muntu babesi besi lunga pucha hana ruan ubusubu ya wena and then arise in the name of Jesus say amen don't charge people for healing them don't charge people for raising their dead don't charge people for casting demons the Bible says freely we have received freely we give say amen false prophets don't charge for anything if you want the anointing of God to increase over your life freely give say amen even those that are coming to see you you shouldn't be charging about demand to come and see you you're a child of God say amen hallelujah oh discerning the present move of God there is obvious mistakes therefore not one that faces the body of Christ during the move of God here are the following mistakes or some of them a we can miss the day of our visitation because we're not sensitive because we're not sensitive we miss it because we can't sense the leading and the guiding and the flowing of the Holy Spirit Jesus said to the Pharisees what watch what he says Jesus said to the Pharisees you hinder many from coming in yet you yourself don't enter in make sure you are not a stumbling block in the name of Jesus be be steps be steps we can miss the visitation because it is not packaged the way you think it should be hmm. there are some people that are not packaged the way that will suit your eyes but make sure that their externality does not hinder you from receiving from them mm -hmm. yeah. it's only Africans that believe that <laughs> because the gospel will be preached in many languages in Debele, in Shona, in Karanga, in what other languages? In French, in whatever. Yeah. Because if someone, the people that are from Southern Africa, if someone came here and preached in French, available I went, ah, he anointing I see is one. What be anointing by his one is Kiwa. He anointing I saw is Kiwa. Tell you, be anointing as Kiwa. He saw Kiwa. He anointing is the presence of God upon an individual. So see, you can miss the move because the vessel is not the likely prospect. Mm. Not the likely prospect. Mm. In a real public way, and then you miss the grace of God. How many would have missed John the Baptist in the wilderness when he was preaching? Yeah, you would not have listened to him because when you looked at John the Baptist, he was not a typical preacher. He chose to put his church in a desert, and you will have to drive to the desert to listen to him. He ate honey, mm. wait, his kumba, but yeah, the anointing that was flowing out of him. <laughs> He would raise his voice and speak. Many missed the day of their visitation when Jesus walked here on earth. Why? Because they didn't expect that God will sit with sinners. And therefore, as they sat with sinners, they said, No, this can't be the Son of God. Look at him. Yeah. He sits with wine bibbers. He sits with this type of people. He can't be the Son of God. They missed him because of what they have they had in their minds please open up your mind your mind can hinder you from receiving from god say amen d you can miss the move of god because you have categorized the body of christ the body of christ into the following movements which are true they're genuine movements the prosperity movement there are people that preach on prosperity only prosperity prosperity and faith movement or holiness movement or reformation movement or apostolic prophetic movement or weight only movement or spirit only movement or spirit and weight movement there are many move or revival movement may we embrace everything say amen it leads us only one way and the way to christ can i give you therefore those eight c's 
concerning the day of visitation. Eight C's concerning the day of visitation. Let me quickly go through one, two, three, and four uh, because we did them there. The work of God is always the first C, controversial. The work of God is always controversial. Say it with me. The work of God is always what? Uh -huh. And many people think that if revival hits in Zimbabwe, there will be great unity all over. That's not true completely, entirely. That's not true. Okay, because you will know that when Jesus himself, the greatest revivalist, appeared, people were divided. They were divided. Very, very divided. Romans 9, verse 33 reads, it reads, let me read it for you. It reads, as it is written, behold, say behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And he says, and whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. So Jesus Christ, when he walked here on earth, became a stumbling block to many. Because they were questioning, he can't be God. Look at what he does. Look at where he goes. Look at Mary Magdalene coming and doing her hair, wiping his feet with her hair. Uh, what type of God is this one? They missed the revival of their time. Say amen. Acts 4 verse 11 will read, This is the cornerstone which was rejected by you builders. Who are builders? Christians. The cornerstone was rejected by builders. It was an outsiders that rejected them. In fact, he reached out more to outsiders, tax collectors and all others, Zacchaeus and company. But it was the Pharisees who were supposed to be builders that rejected him and ultimately crucified him. Because again, they had preconceived ideas. John 7 verse 12, concerning Jesus, it reads, And there was much complaining among the people concerning him. Concerning him. And some said he is good. Others said no. No, on the contrary, he deceives people. <laughs> oh, the work of God is always controversial. Matthew 12, 24. And when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Elizabeth. Elizabeth is the chief demon. The ruler of the demons. So anything that you do in times of revival will be condemned by others. If you raise the dead, there will be people that will say, why do you raise the dead without a license? Uh, why do you do this and that? Uh, you always find controversy concerning the things of God. Say amen. John 10, 19 and 20. Let's read it. Therefore there was a division. Can you see that? A division again among the Jews because of these sayings. Verse 20. And many of them said, he is a demon and he is mad. Why do you listen to him? Work of God is always controversial. Always controversial. Let's leave that, please. Let's deal with number two. Number two. The work of God is always contested by the devil. This is second C, contested. Contested by the devil. Be careful if you are thinking you are doing God's work and there is no contestation from the devil. Get what? Because when you are doing something for God, you will find that the enemy is there to contest. Here is a scripture that will emphasize that. Another parable that he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man. Say like a man. Who sowed seed. This was good seed in his field. But watch verse 25. But while men slept, it is the enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way yeah. and jesus says concerning this scenario let the wheat and the tears grow up together they will be separated in the final judgment some people think oh no false things will disappear no as revival hits there will also be a false revival and the end time process will weed out which is which and the truth will be seen say amen so the work of God is always contest. The devil is a contester. Yeah, he does nothing but to contest. And the writer of the book of Acts 20 verse 29 says these strong words. For I know this, say I know this. After my departure, savage wolves will come among you, not sparing the flock. 
Today, the greatest sins are not done outside. They're done inside the church. Yeah. There are different types of people that come to church. There are those that are full of sins, but they come in because they're looking for Jesus. That's the first category. The second category is, there are those that are coming in and they think, oh, in church, you can have fun. Especially men, you can pick girls in church. Mm. And they come just for that. They're coming to pick girls for church. And these guys are waiting. They are black members. They are waiting to attack. <laughs> That's why before you say yes to a dude, get to know the dude. Yeah, even if the dude is in church, before you say yes to anybody, get to know them. Get to know them. Don't fall in love with a guy that you don't know because he's in church. So something that happens when a man, a young man is with a lady and there are the two of them in a room. So always make sure that there are some people around you and you are not the two of you. Especially my bed sitter line. And you are going to do that. 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 You are going to do <laughs> Never visit a man who has a pet sitter. Yeah. Because of pet go down. But you have a wrong when a very innocent very end. And you have a problem with the church. You have a low spiritual. You have a pet and all that. Humble of you see. So we have this assembly of God. Protect yourself, humble on your sins. Oh, can you two chief let in room for no waiter? Lay yet. Who's a great at the first day? Second day was a Pongola, Jane Cook. Guys can set up and plan things in their heads well in advance. Guys are dangerous. Yeah, please say, brother, 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 we are wrong in so Okay, if I play that move and that move and that move. And, and for example, when an African man gives a lady flowers, he's simply ultimately saying, this must result in sex. Hey, how could I do it? It's romantic. Romantic what? How could I romance it? He wants to go to Canaan straight. Canaan let. Man, just see you see, Carla. Oh, sure, Gillan. Rocha, <laughs> ah, Rocha, we are blessed. Uso, uso, kabangi le Rocha, agula, agula. Rocha, kabanga ngani tola pa? We are going to settle up. Stage one, stage two, and Godu do zafika go stage three. Unga ham be flating like it. Unfu di zucha di sala it on. Unga muzegu visa to unga ham. Even the sala la we change we kumbo ne pamsisa. Because because so in Jela Pasuan, he raised, he minora, he sing up both ways. So the work of God is always contested. Say contested. Counter attack. If you're doing anything for God, get surprised if there are no counter attacks. Get surprised. A genuine work of God will face counterattacks. The enemy will attack you. Serious. In fact, if you want to see that you are on the right path, charge it by the attacks that you are getting when you are doing something for God. Then go for it. If you see everybody praising you, praising you, get worried. Get worried. 
because the enemy is a contestant. Number three, we say the work of God is always constructive. Constructive. That's the third C there. By that we mean productive. Genuine work of God will always produce a good fruit. Say amen. Luke 7, 34, 35, we read this. It says, the son of man has come eating and drinking and you say, look a glutton and a wine people, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Verse 35 is he lays it down. But wisdom is justified by her children. What that scripture simply says is this. My fruit is there for everyone to see. That's what it says. It says, you say to me, I'm a clutter. You say to me, I'm a wine people. But look at what I produce. That's why the Bible is very clear. You shall know them by their fruits. Please, in your life, never judge someone by the anointing they carry and you think they are spiritual. Anointing is not equivalent to spirituality. Miracles are not equivalent to spirituality. Prophesying is not equivalent to spirituality. I have a gift of prophecy in me. I can prophesy even if I'm least prayed up because it's a gift in me. A gift is not given because I deserve it. It is because someone loved me and gave me the gift. So never judge anyone spiritually. In fact, I find that the most unspiritual people flow many a times in gifts. Mm. For example, there's a church in the book of Corinth. Paul writes, you come behind no one in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But you go down verse 7, I think you will find that it is the same church where there was a guy there who had taken his stepmother for a wife. Can you see? Powerful church in gifts, but no fruit. In heaven, you don't go to heaven by anointing or by the gifts. You go to heaven by your character, which is fruits. Yeah. So before you get too much impressed by a preacher, by anyone, follow and watch their fruit. I am interested in fruit, not the gift. The gift is freely given. The fruit is the maturity that you work at. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, where is your fruit? Mm -hmm. Ask them and say, where is your fruit? But in Africa, when someone begins to prophesy, everybody think, my God, that man is a man of God. Forget it. Forget it. I want to see you what you do when you come out. Yeah, that's what will impress me. Because many in heaven will say, but I raised the dead. I did this and that. You know what Jesus said? Depart from me. I know you not. Some vision says, I never knew you. That means that dude had no relationship whatsoever with God. He once received, but the grace lifted. The machine will continue cranking while the oil is finished. Oil gone. Never be too impressed, especially in these closing days. Don't take it. At least you are Am I preaching or joking here? Mm. So it is there for your fruit. And Jesus says, you say I am a glutton, but watch my fruit. Your friends may say you are always in church, turn around and say, watch my fruit. Over time, watch my fruit. Because fruit will tell. At times when the truth and the lie begin to walk together initially, they seem like they are traveling together. But can I tell you one thing? The truth will always outlive a lie. Say amen. Yeah. When we are in church, we are not going to say anything. I will say, long as you are fuga, long as you are, long as you are going, you never say power when we are in church. Who can you and who are fun? And I have a message entitled "Compounded Effort." Eh, you are going to say anything? Can you go and you go over? Yes, there is a difference. Learn your pants, or your peso. Keep on coming to church and keep on listening to the word of God. There is a change that is taking place, and some people may not see it initially. It may take one year, it may take two years, but three years, year number four, you will see a change. 
Uye bese le vantu na mungu sefen. Uwe na loku njalo. Uwe na kukis kukis mshope. Iye na kwebe loku njalo. Can you see that? It's just a good look. You don't judge it year one. Keep on working with God. Keep on working with God. When I left my job as a financial director, my friends laughed at me. My fellow directors, they laughed at me. And said, that man is crazy. How can he live? He live his job that's paying him. Entertainment allowed. Holiday allowed. School fees. Company car. All right, so how can he live and, and, and go to a church? And pastage? How big is your church? I said, between 13 and 50. 13 and 50. He said, he's lost it. Now they have come, many of them, for me to lay hands on them. They call me men of God. So when they come in, I say kneel down. Because I know their attitude. I say kneel down, kneel down, kneel down. Kneel down. Kneel down, please. Say, yeah, but I have something to explain. I say, don't explain anything. Kneel down first. You will explain while you are kneeling down. I'm just dealing with the heart issue. Mm -hmm. oil. But it is the same person. <laughs> That thought you were going nowhere. Young ladies, serve God. Serving God is not detrimental to good living. I can tell you, you will rise again in the name of Jesus. But church. Keep on, no chaka wako changi, ara tu, yena luana. Mm, ara tu, ara tu, things will change. When I met my wife, I was walking, I told her, I'm going to buy you a house one of these days. If you stay with me, I'm going to give ladies, you young guys, hope. Even when I look to mchele la poya ko, chips. Eh, mchele uti kati singi la, but you sasa by this time, you have seen la pa. They need encouragement. See, but in your own heart, la uya hamba, la uya hamba. But keep on saying, this is a hamba for a few years. But the original, uza ngene mote. And uza ngene mote, yiku upela wako kono kare. Uza talo suze mote nfo kud. Say amen. And you young young ladies, can I give you advice? Please, please. Don't be impressed with guys that have everything. Very likely there is a woman behind that. A guy who has everything. A guy who looks smart and complete and everything else. Say amen. I fear well polished up guys. I fear guys that are well polished. They may just be someone. If there is no someone you are competing. Who wants to be competing for a dude? You are stressed up on board and bonding a church. Unhappy man, unhappy. What was to the little chevy boy walk? Oh, we and Jay, Safuni Chica, what, 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 You will see what you get from your chevy chevy boy. Your chevy boy, chevy boy is very loyal. But the cool dudes, I want you to look at the cool dude next to you and say, You are too cool for my liking. But too cool, too cool, mm. too polished. Ungabatie, <laughs> As the chain of pride, as criminal, I'm going to my child. We have to tell you, I'm going to my child. Say amen. Hey, where's what I'm going to do? See, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, so you better, therefore, who could be the one who is going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, well polished, not all the time, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to <laughs> Me, when I was born again, I came with five ladies to church. <laughs> I went to assemblies of God. At the moment I ended by the door, the usher said, I am for it. When I shall hang up, oh, Mama, I shall They used to separate. I don't know whether they do it now. Mama or Baba. I spent all time my eyes looking at the ladies that I had brought. And I never heard the message. 
Okay. Number four. The work of God is contentious. Uh, sorry, continuous. <laughs> the work of God is continuous. Say continuous. Uh -huh. Continuous. It means it doesn't stop with one person. If you have done exploits, there are others behind you that will do more exploits. That's why we fathers have chosen a way of raising sons. If you don't raise sons, you are always fighting with the next generation. Yeah, you are always putting them down and trying to kill them and trying to destroy them. But if you are going to be a father, that means you are raising many. I'm a father. I have sons all over the world. All over the world. All over the world. It was my birthday this, this week. You should see where my gifts came from. All over, all over. Not only from you. No, all over. Thank you for I'm a gift set. Yeah. But all over. I'm not despising your gifts here as a church. But all over. I'm not looking for gifts. But all over. I said to people, don't buy me shirts and suits. Just give me money. I know what to do with money. I'll put it in lead. I just put it in lead. Mm. Okay. All over. All over. Because I have sons. So raising sons is good so that you don't therefore fight the next generation. Yeah, you are looking to see fruit in the next generation. You are looking to see wonders in the next generation. When you see youngsters doing well, you are thinking, my God, I taught that guy. Yeah. When you see someone stand up to preach, you say, this guy is something of me. Yeah, this man copied my sermon, but I don't tell people. Hey, hey. That's powerful. That's what fathers do. Yes, there is more. They will never tell us how to get a sermon. We are humble for an intervene for two months who's a puma the same. He didn't have a humble intervene. But today I saw Vito. If you want my sermons, they are all in the box here for the next generation. Say Amen. They are all here, all of them, all of them here. Hmm. Now I saw you to my head. I was out to deep. Hmm. Hey, Babylon. Say amen. I see you preaching in one of these years. I see the spirit of God falling upon you. I see the anointing of God standing mighty, falling mightily over your life. I see you raising the dead and I see the anointing of God falling over your life as never before. I see you speaking as of the oracles of God. I see men and women astounded by the words that will flow out of your mouth. In the next season, the season that is soon to come, you will stand before multitudes and you will speak until men and women say no man has ever spoke like this no woman has ever spoke like this and the spirit of god will say and then i will anoint you the more as i anoint you the more many will hear of you they will begin to call you from the east west and south and you will obey and as you go there you will stand under my anointing and begin to preach and fire of the holy ghost will begin to fall and many will turn unto god says the lord say amen Say hallelujah. So the work of God is continuous, continuous. Acts 1, verse 1. The former account I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began. Say began. Jesus what? Jesus what? So in the book of Acts, Jesus began. We see the works of God begin. In the Gospels, Jesus began. So there is a finishing that must be accomplished by you and me. He began. He began. He just began. Say amen. If you want the confirmation of that, 
John 14, verse 12. Let's read it. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works, because he began while he was here on earth. And when he ascended, he then allowed his Holy Spirit to come down so that you will not only begin, but do greater works. That's him telling you that. Greater works. Say greater works. Say, I'm about to do greater works. Yeah. And yet he did mighty works. But the Bible says that was the beginning. He left it for you like a true father. I want my sons to do greater than me. Every father. I've never seen a natural parent who will fight their kids because they are more educated than them. In fact, you are proud of your children. Mm. This one wins. So this one wins. No more when you have one now in classroom. But you struggle to make sure that your kids are doing better than you. And you are always talking about them. Is that not so? Say amen. Mm. It is a foolish father that will compete with their sons and daughters. A foolish mother too will do the same. So there you are, and let's deal with number five, because we never dealt with them. The work of God is capricious. The word capricious is an English word. Please ask me, but which one capricious? Who can get a black body? I'm not. Which one got to go capricious? Say capricious. Say capricious, Moana. Hey, I'm not going to say capricious. Say capricious. The work of God is what? Capricious. The word capricious means likely to change. Likely to change. The work of God is likely to change. And the scripture says, John 3, verse 8, like the wind. The Bible says the wind blows where it wishes. <laughs> and you hear the sound of it, so is everyone born of the Spirit. Preachers that move in the Holy Spirit will tell you because of their years of experience at times in a service it's very difficult to know where he is going it's one of the most difficult things as you stand which way should we go because there are many dimensions of the spirit should we go deliverance today should we go prophetic today should we go healing today how should we go should we start with the word and preach? Should something happen after the word? Should I start by prophesying because I feel like prophecy? Should I find a song? Should I call that song that was sung last week? You call it bump, it's flat. You're always looking, but you are smart enough not to show it to the congregation that you're looking. Mm, preachers have several tricks in their bags. So you don't know, but you're following. You're following that wind because one time you think, yeah, 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 and it takes a turn. When you appear to get a cholo train as a ten of Dalalapan. And that's why you can never get used to the ways of God. And he makes it a point that there is no stereotype about him. Otherwise, he knows you and me as human beings. We are creatures of habits. Yeah. Once some things happen a certain way, we think they will always happen that way again. Never never with God never with God have you ever noticed that you can preach one sermon here exactly the same sermon take it somewhere else it failed flat here but the next place ah boom the heavens open we say I preach the same sermon what happened many conditions some people may be hungry in that church much of a preacher will have a severe suit he love I very much suit Especially row number one, row number two, row number three. But that is suit up to a court. And therefore they don't draw. When you place a demand upon a preacher, a preacher will begin to say things that were not planned. Because there's a demand. Because Jesus always is moved by a demand. Son of David, says Bartholomew, have mercy on me. He stops. He was going some way, but someone placed a demand. Demand is crucial in a service. Don't come on neutral gear. We expect to room food is a bit more cocoa. Hey, say, you know, cocoa. We are those cocoa. We are church. So that when we meet together, it is your demand and my supply. Every baby that cries causes a mother to lactate. Is that not so? When a baby goes, yeah, mothers that are nursing will begin to lactate. If a baby does not cry, mothers will never respond to that. 
Equally so in the spirit. There are many people that walk in churches. Vela masemunze to serve us. Well, prepare the satanas. But we have a suit. You can tell preaching to a church that is full. Haya ya kusubu tumba. But when they suit the veli, they have nothing. They have no desire. Hey, go to Ghana and preach in Ghana. Just a simple sermon. For God so loved the world. Someone stands up. Yeah! They are excited by John 3.16. As in today's word for God so loved I will fill it up. I will stay with we in a way. The revelation is going to be a map. I have my points. I have my points. One, two, and three. I have my suit. I have my suit. I have my suit. So if you pastor a church of people that are satisfied and are full, you will lose your anointing unless you are aggressive and fight them all the time. You don't understand why I get aggressive when I stand here. I get aggressive because I'm trying to change your mood. You're neutral here. Hey, so you now you don't understand. At times I annoy people so that they can you get their attention. So the Bible says the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, so is everyone born of the spirit. Say amen. So God is a specialist. In changing things, say amen. You cannot box the Holy Spirit into a certain method. He has no stereotype. You can't box him. Oh, as I'm going farther in a mold and think this is God, you'll be surprised. We are salawetu. Tell your neighbor, who's a salawetu akonapan. Because then he changes and he moves. Say amen. At times, the most exciting part is to navigate in the spirit. At times, the most difficult part is to try and navigate in the spirit because things can change. At times, you can lose your flow because where answer phone, boom, you've lost it. You've lost it. Ah. Oh, you are standing up. Oh, I'm thinking the spirit of God is. Look at that fool. The fool is asleep. So many of them just go, so many. And that you may not meet them, you can't. keep me in when I'm part of my. Apart to feel it, but we are not going to manage this thing. It's just not. In about the best, I'm going to do something that I'm not going to do. Ah, I think by God, this is only the beginning. Says Samuel, please look at your neighbor. So, oh, Abu Lali, I know you think I'm from this world. Talk to them and say, Katunjan. Can I show you the capricious methods of God and the ever change? Okay, here's the first one. It could be a song. It could be a song. A song has the ability to unlock something. Just one song. One song can change. Just one song. Today could be this song, tomorrow another. Mm. Just one song. One song. One. One song, one song. I was in Uganda preaching in Uganda. Man, it was a difficult. I'd taken a team to, to Kampala. I'd taken a large team. I think we're 18 of us. We're doing a, a conference there in, in Kampala, Pastor the Thomas Church. No, his friend's church. Ah, it was a difficult service. I've never seen. I was saying, Lord, I don't know even want to stand up at this time. I'm tired, number one, but number two, this service is very difficult. Until one man, one young man, I thought the young man was very playful when I looked at him. Yeah, very, very playful. But he stood up and the preacher asked him, the pastor asked him to come and sing a song before I stood up. <laughs> ah! <laughs> But hey, my God, was I wrong? Was I wrong? He got a box guitar and set. Yeah, there was nothing. There was no amplifier to amplify the box guitar, but he started picking it. Pa, 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 pa. Just within a minute, the whole atmosphere changed. The whole atmosphere changed. 
Not a good voice. No, just an average voice. Remember, I know music. I may not be a singer, but I know. But just an average voice. The whole place was supercharged with revival. It was brought by this man. Me, I just came in, check at Zakaf, and finished the whole job. But the guy had started the job. The man whom I despised. The man who I said to myself, why is the preacher killing this? He's already dead. He's killing. For me, I was thinking, well, how do I start here? Will I start prophetic? Maybe prophetic will do. This guy came in. What a guy. What a man. <laughs> oh, really do you get such an anointing in a service? And the Spirit of God began to pass. What a service. We had a long service. From a dead service, we moved from zero to 150 kilometers in just two minutes. And everything changed. And we were so excited. I think God had seen my heart. God had seen this young man's heart. I don't know where he came from. I had said to him, sometime in life, I will call you to come and sing that song. I've never called him to come and sing that song. Mm. I'm just remembering now. Mm. I'm like those guys that were whose dreams were interpreted by joseph i forgot him when i arrived home i just forgot about the dude but today as i preach i remember him hmm. i hope i can find him one day to come and sing the same song but what a man what a young man may god bless that young man wherever he is capricious method of god look at jesus healing methods Capricious methods of God. Here are they. Ever changing methods of God. Laying hands on the sick in pertaining healing. At one time he will lay hands on the sick. But he will change that method. At times, he spoke the word. I asked him, just speak the word. You speak the word, the word will be sent. Send the word, speak the word. That's another way. Another way, Peter's shadows and handkerchiefs. Peter was just passing by. And they will lay people on the pavement. And his shadow will heal. His handkerchiefs. Now don't make a tradition out of handkerchiefs. If God uses a cloth to heal today, don't go into South Africa and buy a matawe, who's the church about? Uh -uh. You are then abusing the anointing. The anointing may be on a towel today and never on a towel tomorrow. We have things, nothing. You must grow up and mature in the things of God. Because He knows people. Say, He knows people. Uh -huh. Can you imagine song kissing about a matawul or a pitawul? I was in Kenya in Nairobi. I was preaching, feeling hot. I took off my jacket and put it there. One young man came, took my jacket and ran away with it. He wasn't stealing it. He thought he was taking the anointing that upon me. And he ran away. East Africa. Whoop, ran away with my jacket. The bishop's anointing. Gone with it. Nasalang ala jacket. He suit me ala jacket. Somebody gone with it. So you can understand this. So God knows that we are creatures of habits. Mm. And therefore, a towel may work today as I throw it. Please don't build a doctrine out of towels. Don't start a church called the Towel Anointing in the mountain of Zion somewhere. No. The methods of God are always changing. Say amen. Always changing. Always changing. And you must know that. And never form a doctrine out of an unction, out of an anointing. Never form a doctrine out of an anointing. You get into error. <laughs> get into big, big error. Today, if God says you should spit on someone and they are healed, don't form a spitting church. It can be an anointing for today. But God is ever changing. The capricious methods of God. Say, um, there are others as well. Jesus spit on people's eyes. Hey, ooh, and they got healed. 
but yet you never do it, see him doing it often. It's just recorded once a year that he spit on people's eyes. Hope. Can you imagine a man spit on your eyes? Hey! And then he told them to jump into the pool. Go jump into the pool. Yeah. And then go wash yourself in the river Jordan. Naman was told. And he was offended. It will seem like no one can remember when you are somebody. God will give you an assignment before he heals you. Just to deal with your pride. Hey, just deal with your pride. Clean toilets. You are sick. Clean toilets. As you clean toilets, you are healed. How hmm. oh, mean clean my toilets? Uh, uh, uh. Then you miss your healing. Okay. Go present yourself to the priest, to the lepers. Ten of them. He said, go and present yourself to the priest. So the Bible is full of weird things. Okay, give me those weird things. I'm the Bible is full of weird and crazy stuff. A guy falls on Elijah's bones. No, it's not Elijah. It's Elisha, I think, yeah? On Elisha's bones and he lives. On Elisha's bones. Boom! He lives. Remember the Moabites were burying this, their friend. And they saw an enemy. They said, ah, oh, I smile again. Boom! Read it in the book of uh, Kings. And the guy lives. Building is shaking in the book of Acts. And... See, give me see. People drunk in the book of Acts, staggered. Jeremiah had to carry the ox yoke and walk on the streets. Next. Isaiah for three years walked naked. Please don't try this at home. We are not Isaiah. As he says, Isaiah did. And God was telling him, and you are not Isaiah. I had to write that. You are not Isaiah. Look at that man next to you and say, you are not Isaiah. Mm. Say it again. Say you are not Isaiah. Look at F. F. Ezekiel instructed to cook his food on human dab. Hey, it is God. And he objected. He says, no, I've never done. God says, okay, let me spare you. But use cow dung there. Mm. Hey, can you see it? The methods of God are always capricious. Say Amen. And that's how God will come in these days. Number six, God's work is complex. That's number six C. God's work is what? By that, I mean it's not one size that fits all. Mm -mm. Not one size that fits all. God is especially in knowing exactly who you are your makeup and therefore when he gives you a solution it's a tailor-made solution yeah it fits you it fits you when god gives you a partner in life he knows who you are he knows your temperament then he'll give you someone especially if you're prayerful someone that fits you i'm amazed that people that are introverts will always marry extroverts because there's a balance there hey that's how God balances things. You understand that? Hey, hey, so you will notice that you and your partner are different. You compliment though. Say amen. Mm -hmm. Because if you marry someone similar to you, your life is going to be boring. Okay. If you're one serious person, you need to marry someone who will joke with you and laugh with you and so forth and so forth. They have a serious lonke. They have a serious lonke. They have a serious Yeah. So God's work is complex. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 1 and 5, 15. I have no time to read that account. But you know that account. It is the account of a general, the Syrian general captain. He's, he's sorry, the Syrian army captain. He, he is in Syria. He suffers from one problem. He has leprosy. And he's a very important man. But he is a maid. Say he is a maid. The maid is from Israel. He knew about prophets in Israel that could heal leprosy. So he tells his boss, your problem can be healed by 
prophets in my homeland. Please go there, Naman. Naman initially, I don't know. And so, but finally, he agrees. That's what Second uh, Kings chapter 5, verse 1 and 5. He travels. He travels with gifts to go and meet a man of God. All the way from Syria and traveling across to the land where the man of God was. In arriving there, <laughs> this man of God does not come out to meet him. He gives instruction through his servant. You are talking to a big man, you don't come out. He sends his servant to say, go and tell that man to go and dip himself seven times in the river Jordan and you'll be healed. Ah, a The man said, what? I had to travel far away. I'm a captain. I'm a very influential man. I have come to see you. You never come to see me. And he says, I thought that's where the danger is. I thought preconceived ideas. Never think. Always listen. God is, has capricious methods. This guy came in and he thought the prophet would come in and wave and say, Be healed, servant. Or be healed, I'm a general. No. Because when you are proud, God will offend you so that the pride will leave and he will deal with you. Always, when you are a proud person, I've been a pastor for long. I've stood up in front of many pulpits. I've seen proud people. Mm. When you try to help them, or you're pointing issues in their lives because they want to be known by all that you're macho men, and you're trying to help them, you have this issue in the, oh yeah, how can pastor say that about me? Oh, no, man. I'm trying to help you, you fool. Otherwise you will die with that thing in your life. Or oh, it will grow, that thing. And you are a fool. Thank someone who has got to confront you about your life. Never run away from a person like that. And honor a person like that. Yeah. So I thank God that this guy directed, came to me directly and began to, oh, but fools. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, my life. He doesn't even know uh, my life. My life. You will die in that sin. You may not live a year in that sin and die in that sin. And you're proud for nothing. Hey, no one is trying to kill you. <laughs> People say, Samuba Mulamefa is like a dog that is pricked by, by a thorn. And the master picks it up and tries to move it. If you find a leader that helps you in your life, private if you find someone pointing some issues in your life because many will not do that in Komachan. they will laugh about you behind your back yeah, because everybody loves to be loved I have had leaders myself many leaders that will never confront a sin that they will expect me to confront it yeah hey. <laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs
They are dangerous people that will never talk to you about your condition. Number four, this. Abanya malitas. Ba ku yekela lukunjalo. Be ukula la be kubona utala la la we akula la we akula. They will never point out a thing to say this is wrong. Abalo ila ba bantu ba lo ya pila la ba bantu banjalo. Ah, what you are saying? You are saying you are saying you are saying you are saying you are saying. Please, even if someone is your friend, please don't love them to a fault. No, if someone is your friend and your best friend, when they are in the room, tell them yourself. Mkanuwa mnye utanda pa jintu lewe yenza. Haya, isifebe lule soa mba ngasu, asi chaili kufeba kakulu mkanuwa mnye. Mkanuwa mnye lu kufeba kanchi senza kuchia. Eh, you are a friend indeed. Eh, banga kabanga nipe 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 Uguti mina nzondwe Mina nyachaya Uguti mina nzondwe Anti pulpit nyan Uza mvita no kina Apo kusasa nyachuma ila Uza ntana nyengana Anti bafundis Liga mbunu mte sesu nweni Nkorekti Unga mbuna loe sesu nweni Nkorekti Mchele kona apu nje Mchele vitu yenza yole Uza ufagubi Uza banjo isigi nga chayilegi Kule sigi pelu Kule nye stiti nga chayilegi yopangi Ya kuminjo biwele pazi pa Isale suwa zela rutu Mfuna kutopi ni uwe njo Pukaruki ya rutu Onku mte So we skat vani at 7 that please stand So God's work is complex So this man complained Complain, he's naman. He was served by good friends. Say good friends. Every man must always have good friends. And good friends are people that will tell you the truth. It is one person who said, Ah, oh, General Naman, this man has not asked for much. He's just sent his servant to tell you, go and thank yourself seven times in the River Jordan. I know River Jordan is dead. I baptized people in the River Jordan. Those that went with me to Israel, I baptized them. It's not that dirty. Some sections of it are dead. I baptized River Jordan. Quite a number. My dear. Molly, you are with me. Yeah, I baptized. I baptized you. Yeah, quite a number. Brigitte, I baptized Brigitte. I baptized also a fat lady. I forget her name. She was a fat lady. When I saw her coming by the river, I said, my God, I'm gone. I could see, I could see the waters taking. She was huge. Hey, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. So, the wise people around him said, General Naman, this prophet has not asked you a hard thing. Is it a hard thing? Because Naman had said there are better rivers than this river. Pafa and what is the other one? Pafa and Pafa and who? Pafa and Kaban. Are there no better rivers in, in Syria that I should be dumped in this river? No, he got angry. He, got mad. he was proud. Full of arrogance. And they calmed him down. And he went. Down number one. Down number two. Number three. When he called him, he said, Ah! He said, I don't know. But oh, down number four. Down number five, what would he paint in Dali? Ah, he don't take my food. Number five. Ladies and gentlemen, good. When God deals with your heart to heal you, when you are too proud, you miss the healing of God. That's why Christ always healed the simple. The simple never ask questions. The sophisticated was a how, anjan, yen. So this was a rich man. Number seven. Healed. Completely healed. He was so thrilled to be healed, this man, that he wanted to give uh, Elisha <laughs> gold and changes of clothes and so forth. So happy, Elisha said, No, 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 I don't take, I don't take that. Take it. But Elisha had a servant, say a servant, mm -hmm. called who? Kehazai. <laughs> Kehazai is watching this transaction about to happen and he is watching and listening to Elisha saying, No. 
you can pay me for this. Hey, I, please go. Enjoy yourself. And the servant is waiting. Who was supposed to receive the anointing? Watch this. Elijah has passed, he had passed his anointing to Elisha. Elisha was supposed to pass his anointing to Gehazi. And Gehazi sees God. <laughs> please look at your neighbor. Mm. He hears this conversation and he hears the prophet saying, No, go your way. And the chariot men and his chariot and his servants, they leave. Remember, they are only a chariot, they are moving fast. While Elisha is in the house, Gehazi's greed propels him. He is accelerated and he runs fast to catch up with his chariot. They are going to touch him. Please look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to touch him. I'm going to touch him. If money becomes your master, you're dead. He catches up and he lies. He says, It was all right that my master, sons of prophets, came in. And my master says, It was all right that you give what you had given. And the man was thrilled. He gave more than what he had promised. And he comes in. And he comes in and he hides the stuff in the house. Watch the prophetic. Kehaza, where were you? And he responds, I went no way, my Lord. This is one of the sins of the charismatics lying. Tell your neighbor, you lie a lot. Tell them, you say, oh, mang. You lie even in your own sleep, you are lying. He says, no way, my Lord. Watch the prophet. Wasn't my heart with you? Not my eyes. Wasn't my spirit with you? When you ran, and caught up with that and indeed now there is no god oh no that's not it and therefore judgment comes leprosy leprosy is a disease of rebellion mm. wherever you find leprosy in scripture you watch it rebellion miriam rebelled leprosy okay naman was the same and many others i had written quite a number here that suffered from from the spirit of leprosy leprosy depicts rebellion miriam rebelled against moses king was here they told him you are not a priest and he went by kenya to the temple and he became leprosy Gehazi, leprosy all these got leprosy because of rebellion number seven the work of god is always counterbalanced we're closing now the work of god is always what counterbalance and that's why it's important for the work of God to be counterbalanced. What do I mean by that? Matthew 22, verse 29 says, Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing what? The scriptures know thee. The scriptures know. Uh, can you see the balance? Power and the word. Power and the word. That's why you can't prophesy to people 24-7. You are not balanced. Teach people the word. You're creating babies, 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 babies. Babies love ice cream. Yeah. If I say I have a prophetic night here, everybody will come from my churches here. Prophetic night, prophetic night. But the work of God is counterbalanced. The word and the spirit. The word and the spirit. Say it with me. The word and the word and you are much balanced if you receive a good dosage of the word of God and good demonstration of power. Always counterbalanced. Never sacrifice one for the other. You would rather you could survive with the word. Hmm? Counterbalanced. And Jesus comes in and he produces that. The scriptures in the Bible. Jesus said, you err in not knowing the scriptures, word, or the power of God, the spirit. Say Amen. And that's why Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12. And he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, some pastors and teachers, so that the word will be taught. Again, the other side of this balance is 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 6 will read. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Okay. Again, there are some preachers that will stand behind the pulpit and you're preaching, preaching, you're preaching. You're not moving in gifts. That's not healthy as well. You need to step out. Tell your neighbor, step out. Say it again, say step out. Mm. 
So you need both. You need the word and you also need the spirit. Say amen. Okay, I'm rushing here because we want to finish here. Number eight, finally. The work of God is confusing. That's the last seed there. It's always confusing. But it's confusing to the natural man. The man in the flesh. Confusing. But the natural man, according to 1 Corinthians 2.40, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. Foolishness to him. The things of the spirit no can you know them because they are spiritually descent you can only understand them when you are in the spirit say amen some people get offended when god does some things because they don't understand here is my conclusion ladies and gentlemen all the eight seeds there the work of god is what number one number two the work of god is number three the work of god is number four the work of god is number five the work of god is give your neighbor high five say capricious one and that's it's a nurse it's a new word now my figure part to hey capricious how are you capricious capricious number six the work of god is number seven the work of god is number eight the work of god is to the natural man put your bibles down and we are done today hallelujah i want us to do one prayer item here there are many items that i put here but we have no time okay ask god to release these things in our midst the wine the fire and the wind the wine and the fire and the wind say it with me to release what One more time. What does the wine do? It releases joy and refreshing and these days. What about the fire? What does the fire do? A paging, paging, cleansing. Ah! How do you <laughs> wow and what is the wind the wind is the spirit of god he blows where he listeth where he desires isn't it yeah, to be sensitive to the spirit so once you see us at the wind stage you know something is about to happen nations are about to turn to god uh -huh. let god purge us begin to work a work in Allah pray for those three things today I want you to find one person you're going to pray for those three things together don't spit on their face please look aside as you pray but join hands in two in twos in twos in twos in twos in twos saying I was which I look careful what are we praying about the why fire the wind may that be your prayer for yourself but prayer for the body of christ let's pray father here we are today we are praying for the wine of the holy spirit that indeed he will come again to refresh us he will come again to bring vibrancy in our lives he will come again to bring joy 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 unspeakable may the wine of the holy spirit fill us as individuals may the wine of the holy spirit fill us as families may the wine of the holy spirit fill us as the apostolic house may the wine of the holy spirit flow in the body of christ in the name of jesus we desire more of the wine of the holy spirit in the name of jesus we are crying also for the fire the fire of the holy spirit that comes to purify that comes to page us that comes to separate us that comes to convict us that comes to purify us oh we are open to the fire may the fire wake a wake in our lives a deep work in our lives in the name of jesus oh may that grace flow may that anointing flow in the name of jesus great grace mighty grace 
in Jesus mighty name oh dear God page us and wash us clean and we'll be clean that's our cry that's our prayer today in the name of Jesus the wine and the fire oh God let them be released in our midst we are praying for the wind the wind that brings creative miracles and healings and all signs types of miracles and signs and wonders in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ release the wind of the Holy Spirit release the grace the anointing to flow in a unique way in a special way in the name of Jesus oh dear God your grace your grace your grace to manifest in a special way in the name of Jesus thank you Lord Jesus thank you for your anointing and thank you for your grace in the mighty name of Jesus thank you for the wine and thank you for the fire and thank you for the wind collectively Lord they prepare us for the soon coming King in the name of Jesus we bless you we honor you in the name of Jesus thank you Lord say Amen lift up your hands and say the wind and the fire oh sorry the wine sorry say the wine and the fire and the wind collectively will prepare us for the soon coming king in the name of Jesus put your hands together today by the way this is a prophetic message that you have heard if you can interpret it properly you can tell where we are in this season while you stand offering time if you need an envelope lift up your hand our ushers will give you remember we are building make sure you're collecting one envelope for the building project